Welcome back to another Lord Duckman production. You should be seeing this before the 4th, so happy 4th of July, everybody. Shit. Today I'm trying to battle my way through a Valve Spring upgrade on the go-kart in preparation for the speed contest video. If you haven't already posted your speed guesses on that video, the links are down below in the video description. Don't post your guesses here, because they don't count if they're here. But we should be set up to do the test on this card as soon as next week, so watch for it. But despite the Valve Spring upgrade being as simple as it should be, this is more of a vlog of what happened during that day. It was just entirely too much not to share. There's lots going on in this video outside of the go-kart, and what a mess it was, but I'm still here to talk about it. So thanks everyone for watching, and let's hit that sh**. Back everybody to another hot, disgusting day here in Florida. <laughs> so I'm, your, I'm your host today, the Duck Man, and it is, um, you see, it's almost 99 degrees by 80% humidity. This thing may not be completely accurate because I actually sat it down on top of the hot engine. It might be a couple degrees cooler than that, but the engine was sitting out here. It's a little warm because the environment and the sun reflecting off of everything. But anyway, it's hot out here. It's disgusting. It's gross. And let's see how much I can get done today. Today's plan on this is to install the new valve springs that we have on here. And these are much higher pressure springs than the old springs that used to be on here. Why are we upgrading these? That's because when I hit higher speeds on this, I start to hear valve float. And um, if you don't know what valve float is, it's when the valves, they don't click shut like they're supposed to. So on the next cycle, either the exhaust or the intake, or probably both, are a little bit open, which causes you to lose compression, it loses some of the intake, you know, just gases escape where they're not supposed to be escaping from. And these valve springs being stronger will allow the engine to rev up higher, so that way that doesn't happen so easily. That's the plan anyway. And if it does allow it to rev too high beyond its maximum capacity, then what it's going to do, it's either going to blow up the flywheel or it's going to crack the rod. <laughs> so we'll see if we get to that point. If we do, well then it's a new engine, isn't it? <laughs> I guess it means we're upgrading once again. But anyway, it just flutters a little bit, so I figure before the top speed contest, let's go ahead and slap this in there, and it should be able to get me up to a top speed a little better than it would have before. Well, let's get these installed. There's really not too much to this, so let's see what we got going on here today, but before we continue on, let's take a moment to talk about the HIPAA store. The HIPAA store is a company that sells parts for lawnmowers, chainsaws, generators, and other power equipment, and even has some parts for go-karts. The $1 spark plug sale was so popular that HIPAA decided to run it again for the month of July. That's right, all spark plugs are only $1 each. So it's time to stock up. They even have some spark plugs for motorcycles. In addition to that, there are dozens of other items that are on sale, from fuel filters to chainsaw chains to carburetors and more. So please, check out the HIPAA store. Please follow the affiliate link down below in the video description because when you support the HIPAA store, you also support my video creation on this YouTube channel. Special thanks again to the HIPAA store for sponsoring this video. Your typical Predator 301cc engine. I'm gonna pull off the valve cover on here. I think I've got all the right tools out here for it. How about that? Not my first time in here. Sean just loves it when my little bit falls out. <laughs> Real carefully pull this off and try not to mangle the gasket. There's the hammy. You can tell because the valves go in diagonally instead of straight up and down. So there's the valve springs we're going to be replacing. My understanding that these are about 25 pounds of pressure versus the ones that I got here, which are 50. So I'll be doubling the amount of force that's on there. Now, I did something similar on the old 196 that I had. I believe they had uh, 10 or 11 pound springs or something like that. We put in 22s, so we also doubled it on there. And it made a bit of a difference because it did rev up quite a bit higher. So what we're going to do today is we're going to take off the rockers first off. Now, I've never had these apart before, but it looks like, yeah, it appears we're going to pull this bolt, take off a little sir clip, and then push out a pin, and then the whole rocker should come out. Well, here you go, cross fingers. Looks like the whole pin might just push out. 
without having to remove the circlip. Hmm. Maybe I'm wrong. Up oh, there it goes. Okay. That's how it's going to come out of there. Guess we'll do the same thing on this side over here. Yep. But you can only do one at a time, Duckman. This one's binding a little bit, and that's because we're not at top dead center. We should have been, but Duckman failed and did not check for it. comes to the top. I think we're gonna actually be at TDC right there. Oh, there it is. Now these are pulling out nice and easy. Got them. Okay, good. On top of the valves are these little retainers. Now on the 212cc's or the 196's, you remember these retainers didn't match. They were different on both sides. For safekeeping, I'm going to stick them right inside the valve cover so we don't lose them. Okay, now inside of here, and it's probably going to be really hard to see, but you can see the little valve cap that's in there. It splits, two little half moons that clasp around the valve stem with the valve retainer kind of pushing back into them so it locks everything together. Well by pushing on these I should be able to um, release that mech. However, however, as you notice if I'm pushing on these now it's, all it does is just push the valve in. It doesn't actually release anything. Reason for that is because the valve is going inside the engine. So I have something for that and this is something I've only done once before and I actually taught, taught this. I learned this from my dad my dad taught me way back when that if your valve fell into your engine because the keeper of something released while you were working on it, what you do is you just feed some rope into the uh, chamber while the piston is down. Put in a good amount of it. Make sure it's clean, of course. And this is going to save you from having to completely remove the head, or if you had an overhead cam, you got to deal with all that and the cam tensioner and all the extra bolts and the cooling tins, and it's just there's so much here that you got to mess with. <laughs> and what's funny is the last time I did this, I actually somehow got the rope caught in one of the valves. <laughs> all right, that should get it. Now we're going to pull on the cord until it's tight. Now we should be able to push on the valves, and we can. And the valves are no longer going in. Okay. Well, that one did a little bit, but just a little bit. Now I should be able to get the sucker to release. Now these are, are uh, I think about 25 pounds they were, and these are 50s. These are going to be a lot harder to compress. Although I can do it in my hands here. I mean, I got Duckman grip, for whatever that's worth. This is sometimes easier to extract these with a magnet. You kind of push on it. It's easier if you have uh, two people doing it even because one person with their thumbs can push on it and the other person can pull the keepers out. But we're going to give it a shot. This is going to be hard, really hard to get these back in because I don't have the tool to do it. All right, well, here comes the fun part, Duckman. <laughs> What's going to happen is these are going to fall on the ground and then I'm going to lose them because they're going to land right here in the pine needles. Let me lay down a blanket here because I know that I'm going to drop something. This is the tool you're supposed to be using on this. This is a valve spring compressor if you will. I suppose that's what it should be called. It allows you to push down on the valve like this and then, oh actually I just released it strictly by accident but <laughs> it came out just by pushing without having to use a probe in there to pull out the uh, the keeper. But there's the little keeper pieces. There's these two little half moon pieces that lock into uh, into the valve and it holds the spring in just simply like that. I don't believe that just came apart as easy as it did. I guess they're delicate. <laughs> Can't think of any other reason that would have been. Anyway, that means this one's ready to get a new valve spring. 
looking at the old one and the new one you can see the old old one is much thinner and more wiry than the new one and squeezing them oh yeah this one I can compress it all the way just like that Boop. flat this one well, I can do it too but it takes a lot more force but I also have the grip strength of 13 men that's part of being the duck man <laughs> all right now these little keepers they got to go back in there this can be tricky with this tool because it doesn't have oh, damn it I got this magnet here it's driving me nuts because the openings that are on the side here aren't particularly large so it's a little hard to get in there and work but we're gonna do it anyway Let's see what kind of results we get now one of the little keepers I'm gonna drop him back in there because I think what I can do is I can weasel it and then drop the second one in next to it oh man these are a lot stronger I really want to show this being done by hand rather than using the tool so I put the little retainer clips inside of there got it on top and come on duck man show us your thumb strength 15 minutes later. Well, we got a little interruption and I had to head on out of here, but uh, I got a call from the owner of the red convertible Beetle that you'll see the video up on next week. She broke down not far from my house and didn't know what was wrong. She actually broke down in front of a, the uh, repair center for an auto dealership. And the guys came on out and they tried to help her with it and they were trying to push start it and a whole bunch of other stuff. And she called me and she says, can you tow me? And I said, well, let me just have a look at it. You're only a few blocks away. Probably I could snap my fingers and fix it. And sure enough, I did. I went on over there and I looked at it, I opened the engine compartment, and I'm hearing all this chatter from all these guys that tell me, oh, it's got to be this, it's got to be that. You know, all these, these Ford Chevy guys or Nissan Honda guys or whatever you want to call them because it's a mixed dealership. They sell used cars. They fix just about anything there. These are mechanics, and they're experienced mechanics, but this is what separates a standard mechanic from a specialist. I opened the engine compartment, and I plugged the coil wire back into the coil. That's it. Turned the key, it fired right up, and she drove away. Everybody was shaking their heads. It's like, come on guys, <laughs> it's not hard. But I guess in their defense, they don't work on cars that have distributors anymore. They have all these computers and all this other crap. So you plug a computer into it, which tells you what's wrong with it. And then you replace what it tells you you need to replace. With a Volkswagen, it's more intuitive. You have to know what you're looking at. You really have to understand these things. And while they probably could have if they had it in their shop and really worked on it, the fact is they couldn't. And the duck man got it. I, she, I don't think I was even on the side of the road, but like 30 seconds? I mean, it was that easy. Opened it. Oh, I see the problem. Boop. Try it. Started. And off she went. That was it. <laughs> anyway, we're working on this. And what you didn't get to see, while the phone was ringing, I got the exhaust spring on. And, and I don't know how I did it. Uh, 50 pounds with these thumbs. And, and they're a little tender still. So I will be investing in a proper valve spring compressor for having to do these the next time. The Volkswagens are a lot easier because the retainer and the springs are bigger, so it's easier for me to push it down with my thumbs, whereas these things are little and they, they bite into me. Anyway, that sucker is, that's a beast. That's tight. <laughs> now we gotta do the intake side over here. And I may spare you from all the nonsense of all the crap, but we'll come on back to it when we're about ready to start setting valve lash. And uh, I see you, Biddy. He's down there, he's getting ready to attack me. Yeah, change your mind, buddy. That's it. You go away. <laughs> anyway, we're going to pull the intake out and get that situated, and we'll be back in just a minute. All right, I don't feel like fighting with this one, so we did the redneck method. We just simply put in a vise, squeezed it with some zip ties, and now it's ready to go in there. And what happens is I'll get everything clipped on there, and then we'll just cut the zip ties off, and we're done. <laughs> Here we go. Yeah, those 50 pound springs are pretty intense. Like I said, especially pushing on these little caps with my thumb. I was able to do that one. This one just wasn't so friendly. And over here, I tied this in to stop the uh, crank from turning because it's attached to the bolt there. Kind of uh, hokey, but you know, it got the job done here. 
I don't even know that I absolutely I don't even know that I absolutely needed it, but nonetheless, I did it anyway because I thought maybe when I was pushing on those valves, I may have pushed them in. All right, so release the crank a little bit, pull our rope back out, and it's out. Here we go. Okay, we can put our spark plug back in, and we can start reinstalling our rockers. How about that? Five minutes later. You know it's bad because I'm back on camera and I don't even have a hat on. <laughs> but as if things couldn't get any worse, that's not my blood, guys. That's Biddy. Biddy came and attacked me, and my right ankle is messed up. I still haven't taken my pants or my sock off yet to see what it looks like. But he put his spur in me, broke it off, and was running around the yard bleeding everywhere. And he did that already to his other leg. So I had to catch him. And I had to cauterize the wound because it was gushing. It was squirting blood out everywhere, just like it was on the other side. So first part was capturing him. Second part was trying to light a torch. That way I can heat a piece of stainless steel to press it into the hole where his, his uh, spur used to be. And I'm a little lightheaded right now from all the running around in this heat. It doesn't help that I haven't had anything to eat yet today because it's the end of the month. <laughs> that means I go shopping tomorrow? Anyway, uh, I'm just gonna take a cold shower, have a Coca-Cola, and relax for a little bit, and we'll finish this whole valve nonsense later. Thanks, Biddy. One hour later. I'm gonna take it easy tonight. That was a little scary. Once I got in a cold shower, though, I was in there for about a minute, I came around, so it was definitely was overheating. I know you're supposed to get water, and I've been drinking water the whole while. I mean, look, I all these bottles of it here, so I've been putting down one water after the next, so it wasn't like I dehydrated myself. I know what to do when it gets this damn hot out. In fact, what's the temperature now, anyway? The humidity came down, but it's still about 90 degrees out. <laughs> it's hot out here. At least the humidity came down. It's not, like, ball shit sticky like it was earlier. It was just nasty. Anyway, we got to finish this yet, but I'm not going to do it now. I just... After having that incident with Biddy bleeding all over the place and keeping an eye on him in the last hour, making sure that he's not going to die because he lost so much blood. I mean, there was just blood everywhere, all through the yard, all down the front of me. It was all over my hand. He kicked it up into my face, and it's all over the top of the kitchen stove because that's where I tried to cauterize it, and the whole house smells like burnt hair because burning and pushing in. Yeah, it was bad. And that spur that sticks out the back of his leg... You know, kind of like that. It's got bone in it. It's just a piece of bone that extends out the back of his leg. It's kind of T-shaped. And the whole bone broke off. And the marrow and everything that was in there was actually squirting blood out of it. So he was, he was in bad shape. And he would have died had I have not helped him. But had I have not gotten in the cold water myself and relaxed for a bit, I probably would have died too. So if I didn't get to take care of him first, we probably would have both died. I mean, it was... It was scary. That was actually a little scary. I uh, would not have done what I did if he wasn't hurt. You know, I put him first before me. I put him first because I knew that, again, if, if I died, then it would have been both of us. Anyway. Children. <laughs> we do a lot for our kids. Okay, well, I'm going to leave everything just like it is. I'm just going to put a tarp over here and kind of cover it up, and uh, I'm going to continue drinking my water. To walk around the yard and see if I could find uh, Biddy's spur that he broke off. It wasn't in my jeans and I didn't see a hole, but I'm sure it's somewhere right behind where the camera is here and I'd like to collect it because I have his other one on the coffee table. You know, something to keep of him when he's gone someday. <laughs> Stupid little bastard. <laughs> the following day. Well, we're back today. It's, uh, it's been a hot one the last few days. I actually missed recording yesterday even though I wanted to come on out here. But, I overheated myself again yesterday, and it was just a horrible thing. I went to a Volkswagen tech session, and I drove Ruby some, uh, a probably 120 mile round trip in this heat, this oppressive heat, where it has a heat index of like 110 degrees. It was, it was a long drive, let me tell you what. So I had to go all the way past where tech session was at, because we didn't have it in town this month, and I had to drive all the way out to... Uh, Santa Rosa Beach, 
to visit um, friends of mine, the ones that own that blue square bag, so I could do a couple of fine-tuning adjustments on it and look at the other car that they're going to have me work on next. So then after that, I went back to Navarre, which is where our tech session was at. So I had a total of about, I think I had about five or six hours in the car yesterday, plus whatever hours I was at a tech session, which had no air conditioning, and it was just hotter than hell. And I overheated myself again yesterday to the point where I started getting a little lightheaded and not as bad as when I was chasing Biddy bleeding all over the place the other day. But I digress. I'm talking too much here. We need to get this thing done. Uh, it rained last night, which was to my surprise. Thankfully, I had everything covered up. But we did get a little water in a couple places where it's not supposed to be. Valve cover's got some water in it there. So i have to spray that out with a little WD-40 because that's what the WD stands for, water displacement. Now for some reason it says it's only 90 and a half degrees out here with 68% or 64% humidity. Um, I don't think that's quite accurate. It was sitting under a tarp that was damp, so the evaporative temperature gives it that, so we'll see what happens. But it's not as hot as it has been, it certainly is not. So we'll just stick that right up there. Got my ice water today. <laughs> Mm. Uh, all right let's go ahead and get to work where we left off at we got our 50 pound valve springs in geez i didn't even put in a spark plug that's not like me at all i must have not been feeling well because ordinarily i would have put that in just to protect the uh the compression chamber from getting crudded hopefully it didn't get any water in it you know what if it did now's the time to find out right Freaking pine needles all over everything here from that storm the other night. Which wasn't even in the forecast, by the way. Now, no water coming out of there. Good. Okay. And there's our spark plug. Let's get that wound back in. Beauty's screaming his ass off because he wants attention. He's not going to get any. Alright, I'm missing a couple tools out here because I took them with me on my trip yesterday. But, we'll grab that stuff and we'll get this thing finished up. I thought I lost my impact. Driving in a spark plug. Duck man, you know you can strip out a spark plug or break it clean off. <laughs> I left this in a trunk of Ruby the other day while I was at tech session and uh, I had the trunk open on Ruby for, I don't know, 10-15 minutes and when I just went to look for this thing it wasn't there, at least I didn't see it. I had a piece of paper towel over it but I thought the worst of people for a moment. I honestly thought one of my friends might have stolen it from me, and that was a very, very bad feeling. Anyway, it wasn't. I found it. <laughs> can only blame myself. Okay, in here, got a little dirty, I guess from the wind stirring up dust and stuff, so before I go any further, I'm going to wipe this down inside of here and get this a little cleaned up. I should have put that cover back on. I knew I should have, but I wasn't in my right mind at all when I was... Uh, Working on this stuff the other day. Yeah, I was in bad shape. Right? <laughs> Just a little bit of that. Diddy is screaming his ass off, and if he don't shut up, man, I'm gonna kick his ass in. I'm getting really tired of that bird, especially after he decided to uh, sneak up behind me yesterday, well, two days ago, and attack me the way he did, and ended up harming himself by trying to hurt me. That's how nuts this bird is. Totally a sicko. A little water in there? Well, it isn't now. <laughs> yeah, that'll, that'll displace it. Okay. Way up in there. Now he's screaming his ass off. No reason. Been quiet all morning. Now he's gonna be an asshole again. Anyway, he's about to go inside, but that's kind of a gift because with the AC on inside, he's gonna soak it up. Mama bird, by the way, has been in the AC for two or three days. She hasn't laid in almost two weeks, and she laid an egg last night. So actually, it may have been something to uh, the farmers telling me that it was just too hot for her to lay. I guess they're right. I wasn't sure. I thought maybe she was sick or something. Okay. Got our little 
valve caps here, which are also wet. Right it's not exactly assembly lube, but it'll be okay. All the oil will get on everything when I start this thing up. Good news about valve train stuff. It doesn't require a whole lot of lubricant. I mean, camshafts do, but there's no cam lobes here. They're down below, we need the lower end of the engine. Okay, we got our caps on. Now, I didn't observe these to see if there's a left or a right, or an intake and an exhaust. There's a J and a P. That's what it says on these. J and P, and BD, I guess that means big dick. So I'm a big dick jerker, or I'm a big dick pussy. I don't know. Something. Okay. This is gonna go on. Yep, it's gonna go on like that. Okay, they actually do have a side. Pull that pin out. It's just still oily from before, so good. There we go. Oh, and I missed the damn rocker. Damn it. Try again. Get the rocker. I haven't taken apart one of these uh, Predator Hemis before. Only know about them because I've well, only read the instruction manuals and I've watched other YouTube videos, which makes me YouTube certified, right, guys? Come on, I get in there already. Oh, you know what? We may not be at top dead center here. That's what was going on. It was pushing on the valve a little bit. That was it. All right, now I hope this one... Should have done this before I put the spark plug in. It could have actually um, measured the uh, location of the piston and figured out whether or not we're truly at top dead center. Or at least on a compression stroke. Compression stroke will be when the valves are closed. Okay, come on now. There we go. Just need a little tappy tappy. A little love tap. Alright, like an idiot, I'll put this in there like I said. I'm just gonna take that right back out. And we're gonna feel for top dead center. There's intake. Intake stroke. It should be compression stroke. The piston should be here right now. There we are, top dead center. Now I can measure my valve lash. The knees are, wow, actually really tight. This one has no play at all, and this one barely has any. So we'll set the lash on these properly. That way they do what they're supposed to do, but uh, I bet this one might, may have been, yeah, it just might have been putting a little bit of pressure on the intake, which might be why it seemed like the valves were floating. Maybe they weren't floating. Maybe they were just blown back through the intake. Yeah, it might have been that problem all along. Anyway, we got stronger valve springs on there. Yeah, I know. 50 pound springs versus 25 pound springs may be a little parasitic until we do upgrade the engine, but it will give me more um, revs, if you will, because the valves aren't going to flow. All right, well, we're in a good spot to put this back in so we don't get dirt back in there. Let me get my feeler gauge. And we'll get these things lashed out. I got a little sidetracked on another project. <laughs> a little embarrassing to say, but hey, it happens, right, guys? Anyways, I got the feeler gauge out. I had to look up the specs on this. And when I looked it up on the internet, People would say, well, I use 2,000s, or I use 8,000s, or I use 6,000s, or I use this for this and that for that. What are the actual numbers that the manual says? Anyway, the answer is between 4,000s and 8,000s. I like a quieter valve chain. I don't mind checking it periodically, so I'm going to go with the 4 1,000s. And this one, when I slip it in on the exhaust side, it is super tight. So clearly, it's too tight. And the intake side, I can't even get it in there at all. So, we need to uh, loosen up these adjusters and then um, just simply make adjustments on them. I mean, it's not that hard. 
You guys have seen me do this on Volkswagens a million times before, so we'll do the same thing here right now. All right, looks like I didn't grab me a, a 10 millimeter, which I think is this. Nope, what is that? That's a nine, why did I bring a nine out? What the hell would I have done that for? <laughs> okay, all right, let me get rid of that. All right, there we have it. Slight drag, slight drag, good to go. Fantastic, cover is ready to go back on. This uh, got some dirt on it too. Make sure that it seals properly so it's gotta be clean or at least clean-ish, right? <laughs> P-Blaster makes a great wash, oh boy. <laughs> Here's our valve cover, which got some water in it. Where the hell is it all even dripping out of? Look at this. Oh, you know what? There's a baffle inside of there. There's two covers, an inner and an outer, and there's a baffle inside of it, which I suppose is supposed to capture some of the oil before it blows back up into your intake. Well, that's what was in there. A little bit of water. A little bit's not going to hurt anything. A lot of bits, not a good thing for the engine, of course. Plus, it'll cause some rust spots, which looks like it already did. This is not supposed to ever be exposed to moisture, but it was because I didn't bring it in. Again, I wasn't in my right mind yesterday, or two days ago, when I was doing this work. I tell you what, it's so much cooler out here than it was. I'm not dying out here today doing this stuff. No, not at all. All right, here we go. Let's put this back on. Oh, you know what? I forgot to do something. Ho oh, oh, ho oh, ho oh, ho, dark man. Don't forget this. All right, this is the uh, retainer for the rockers. And which bolt is it? Here, look at your Zenith one. Uh oh, I dropped it. Go. Right, we're this right in here. I think that's the right bolt. All right, you know what? No, it's the right bolt. It's the wrong socket. I don't know why I have wrong sockets out here for things. It's an eight millimeter, there it is. All right, good. This is time, as good as any, for a swig of water. Mmm. Put our valve cover back on here. Okay, here we are. We are reassembled. Here is our spark plug wire. And I think that should be able to start at this point. Let's gather up the tools here so everything doesn't vibrate off the back of this trailer. Here we go. And we got bubbles. I also had more in this can than I thought. Looks like we got almost half a tank out of it. And like I said, I did smell some bad gas, and I don't know if it was from that can. No, I guess it was just whatever flooded out of the carburetor. There must have just been a little bit of shit left in the bottom of it. Okay. I think it'll be all right. Just needs a little more love. All right, Boomer. I see you over there, buddy. There we 
go. Much happier with that. Well, before we wrap up this video, let's have a walk around and let's talk about a little of what's coming up this week and what else we got going on. Yes. All right, well, for starters, let's start with the chickens. Right now, Cheeky's hanging out in Mama's cage. Biddy's inside, and there's Mama in the back there, behind all the cages. They love to dig back here, man. That's where that wood pile used to be, and I guess there's a ton of grubs and things over here to dig up. I'm gonna flip that piece of uh, metal over. That's from an old washing machine, some of the uh, Eleanor spare parts, if you will. Anyway, I'll flip that over. I bet you there's worms and grubs and stuff underneath there that you're just gonna love, isn't it? Yep, you know, I try to keep them double covered. They have tin roof, they have a tarp roof, so the tarp helps to deflect the rain, if you will, and it also, for whatever it's worth, keeps the sun off, so that way the metal doesn't turn it into a convection oven. What are you doing, Fluffy? Fluffy's been laying eggs. She lays these little blue ones. They started out as olive green, and they started to go with a pale green, and now they're a pale blue. So I think she's a witch. Yeah, eggs are changing colors. Cheeky laid her egg earlier today. She was acting a little weird. Whenever they start acting weird, bouncing all over the place and breathing heavy, is uh, when I usually bring them inside and put them back in their cage, because they'd rather, and this is great, because I actually spend one-on-one -on -one time with my birds enough to understand how they function and that means they want to go inside and they want to lay an egg so I put them in their cage and usually within like a minute or two out comes an egg and then they want to go back outside but of course you know it's comfortable to lay an egg inside where the AC is running it's been running all week long I managed to get through the month of May and almost completely through June without running any AC it was hot but it wasn't like deathly hot until this past week and that's why literally I almost died here's my pepper plants which are doing wonderfully. This year, I've really done a lot. As I was told that pepper plants, you should just kind of ignore them, especially hot pepper plants, because they develop on their own and they come from an arid environment where they don't get a lot of water. Well, this time I water them about every day, every other day, and they're doing so much better. I mean, duh. That's what I get for following somebody else's advice on the internet. Needless to say, every time I do things my own way, I always turn out with a better experience than trying to listen to anybody else. All the experts, you know how it is. But anyway, this thing is just full of peppers. There's dozens on this one. The little middle tree here, this one is growing brand new stalks because the old stalks, remember they broke off from the hurricane. So this plant was only this tall when it had formerly been up around here. So this one will start getting caught up. In fact, they all broke off. Every one of these is broken off stems. This is all from, from hurricane stuff. You see all these stems are all busted off. This one also was once tall. In fact, you can see the dead stem growing out of there. I'll go through there and I'll clean all that out. But anyway, this one is also growing dozens of peppers, but these aren't changing color yet. Well, one is. There's one there. That one's almost ready to harvest. In fact, you can pull these off kind of early if you want, because when they start turning orange like this, they're, they're ready to go. Sometimes they'll turn red. My plants don't do that for some reason, but I have bought them in the store that way. The red ones are much sweeter. But the more green they are, the more bitter they are. They taste more like a... Uh, a green bell pepper but with the spice of a habanero so sometimes I like to take some of these down because they're good for cooking and uh, they don't turn orange or you know they don't ripen like a tomato does when they're off the vine needless to say they're doing quite well and this tree in here and he's got a couple peppers also not too many though because this one is just growing all of its brand new stalks so that's just growing on some of the old stalks this is growing up. I'm starting to see little buds in some places. So we're going to get some peppers out of this one. Some more peppers out of this one soon. This is the one that started the season. This is the one that's uh, going through here. And then this one will be our last one probably, I'd say. Maybe by August we'll have some good peppers coming out of it. But the fact is this thing's growing. Now there are poblano plants in here also. Because I read on the internet, poblanos and habaneros like to grow together. And if you plant them together, put a seed and a seed together, so that way they have a tendency to touch each other. The plants, I don't know, they're, they're perverts. They like to rub on each other. So that's what I was told, and my poblano peppers, those things just grow like shit. <laughs> I don't even know if this is any poblanos that's left in here. I guess we'll see. I do see two stems growing up out of there, so there may be two different plants. In fact, this might be the poblano right here. Because the leaves on the poblano do look different than they do on the habanero. That could very well be what it is. But anyway, that's enough on my pepper plants. That's what's going on over here. So this is Duckman's farm. <laughs> I got to get to work on this chassis a little more. I got to do some more welding on it. I have to finish cutting this thing up. And this is what I'm not looking forward to because I just got to get out the old angle grinder and start cutting these pieces out. Because each one of these rungs on this little ladder thing need to come out because this is salvageable metal. And this is what's going to become the frame or the additional frame, the reinforced frame, that's going on top of this bus chassis. 
because this bus chassis needs to get the square back on top of it. Right, Boomer? Good boy. Boy, the yard's a mess, and I can honestly say that. It's even a mess for me. I got so much out and about that's been moving around. Need to deal with that stuff. I got mowers over there. I need to start sorting out and start doing some more videos for HIPAA. Uh, got the generators over there. I got a couple generators in the shed. All that stuff is still going. Up front here, we still have the square bag. This is the one that's going up on the bus chassis. This one does run. I mean, I haven't started in a month, but all I gotta do is turn the key on, it'll fire right up. These bus trailing arms, ball joint stuff, this is all ready to go. I'm gonna work on that this evening and get that finished. I wanna put these things together, well, near finished. At least get them slapped together, I'll tighten down the bolts and stuff on them later, but just have them assembled so that way I can come back and attack them with the tools later. Then I have to finish up the carbs on here. You guys haven't seen any videos on that yet, but that uh, stuff I've been working on. I'm trying not to dig too deeply into it because once I fix the front suspension, I can move this thing. And that's really been the goal because this one does run and drive. So once this moves, I can bring that closer to the house and then I can start working on that one here. This is another square back. Um, this is a 66, if I'm not mistaken. I was talking to the owner about it the other day. So I thought it was a 70s model, but when we got a good look at the front, we realized it had a curved front end on it. You see it's sloped, which is something from the earlier model, body style, just like uh, Ruby has. So that's what we're looking at there. So plan is to get this thing together also. I just gotta go through it, fix a little bit of body work. There's a door that's in the trunk here. This door needs to be replaced. There it is. Ooh, it's a different color. <laughs> First time I got a good look at it. That door is actually in really good shape. Even got some nice paint on it. It's a shame it doesn't match. But anyway, I'm gonna pull that door off, put that one on, and then that door gets uh, salvaged, scrapped, you know, whatever we gotta do with it. And then I gotta go through the engine on here. This thing's gotta be running and driving. That's the goal. Fix up as much rust as I can, run and drive and give it back to the owner, and he's gonna handle getting it painted and everything else that needs to go, and then he's uh, planning on selling it. So we'll see what happens with that. And then the Z, well, I went to take this for a drive the other day, and you know, we've been having problems with wheels, tires, and underbelly pans and all that crap falling off of this thing. Well, more of the underbelly crap like ripped out, so I just made it go away. And then I got a flat tire. I didn't even make it, but a few houses down, and I noticed the tire was flat. So I just pulled it back up here in the yard, and this is where it sits. And I'd really like to have it running and driving because this is my air-conditioned car. The only air-conditioned car that I own. So anyway, that's it for now. I guess we'll wrap this video Everybody, up. Everybody, we got a speed contest on this thing coming up, and these big wheels and tires are coming off of this thing before the speed test. Good news is these unbolt real easy. There's a nut right here, there's a nut on the bottom, tie rod, nut, nut, off it comes. I can change out the entire front end on here in oh, literally like five minutes. Five minutes if I have all the tools laid out, no problem. I do want to, and this is not any part of this, but I do want to raise the suspension on this a little bit because you can see those A-arms, they're not downwards like they should be. That one's actually sloped up just a little and that one's kind of level. And I think if these shocks were a little bit longer, in fact, if I bounce it, usually they even up. Yeah, it's still not quite evened up. But anyway, also the front end is tipped because it's on a trailer which is sloped down. And it's into the suspension so I wouldn't be surprised if it squished it a little bit. But I think it's a little soft and it needs a little preload on it. So what I'll probably do is I'll extend those shocks about an inch or so. We should, an inch or so. <laughs> we should move those A-arms down in the position and give me a little more, a little more travel out of it, a little, little bit of a stiffer suspension because to me it's, it's kind of mushy. It's workable, but it's just a little mushy. And you want to have the front end just a little bit mushy and the rear end kind of stiff so that way you can drift it. So that's always been the plan with this thing. Boomer, what are you doing over there? Hey, what are you doing? I need to fix the uh, light on the trailer too. Like always, those things always get knocked off or broken. That's why my license plate is all wrinkled because the damn thing just sticks out in such a goofy way. And there's really no good way to satisfy that except build a cage around it. No, I can't put it underneath the tailgate of the trailer because when I tip the trailer up, guess what happens? You crush it. Yeah, anyway, everybody's always going to give me a better answer, aren't they? <laughs> But these wheels and tires on here is something that I really, really like. I'm going to have to go around the rims of them because the beads do leak. So something to deal with. But they don't appear to leak through the rubber. The rubber's not in the most excellent of condition. It's got some little drywall, not drywall, um, dry rot cracks in it. Little tiny ones, which are going to get worse with age. But these wheels are just temporary to get this thing up and driving with the bigger set on it. So I can play with it for a little bit before they go. Again, they're not going to be used in traffic, so it, being an off-road vehicle it really doesn't matter. But the next plan is to get that axle off. And this is after our speed contest, by the way, links down in the video description. Post your speed, 
And don't give me some BS, you know, it's any speed that anybody else didn't choose. A couple of you guys did that. That's not funny. Now, we actually got a contest going on here. If you want to participate, do. If you don't, well, then don't. <laughs> but this rear axle, I think, is going to be the best way to do it. Remove the rear axle and then graft it into the trailing arm on this thing. Uh, the diameters of all this stuff, because those axles and this axle are freaking proprietary. They're like stepped. They're not like one inch all the way across like a traditional go-kart would be. This thing has like uh, like a 36 millimeter in the center, then it tapers down to like a 30 millimeter, down to it's like a 19 millimeter, or is it an 18, something like that, with goofy number of splines on it. So the only rims you can fit on this cart are the rims that came with it. You know, they could have had a whole aftermarket catalog set up for this thing if they wanted to, if they would have just chose something a little more standard, but they didn't do that on this. But anyway, what I need to do is get that axle and put that onto here. Now that axle, I believe, is turned around backwards. And I think somebody did that because this Predator engine never belonged on here. This was supposed to have its own engine set up. But that disc, or rotor, is supposed to be on that side. Because that's why somebody doesn't have the brakes attached anymore, because the caliper mount is over here. But they probably did that because that way the sprocket needs to be to the left for a Predator engine where it was different with the engine that was previously on here. So I think somebody unbolted the axle, turned the whole thing around backwards and put it back together. I'm going to have to look at the hubs on this thing too because the hubs, they spin freely on the axle. So I'm going to think that they're probably wallowed out. I bet you there's no, no splines left in the axles at all anymore. Now the end, the end hubs I believe are cast and as you know cast is usually a little kind of soft and the axle is probably forged so it probably ate out the axle if somebody didn't bolt them down tight enough and sure enough when I got this cart those wheels were not bolted down tight enough <laughs> so I'm gonna order up some of those I found a set of them online uh, it's like it was under 20 bucks I think they were eight dollars and change each <laughs> so under twenty dollars with free shipping I get these things sent to my door now I don't know if I need both of them I'm gonna pull both of them off just have a look and we'll find out but uh, yeah, the whole axle is going to go up underneath here, so that's the plan. And then we got to figure out how I'm going to orient it because this sprocket is nearly center, almost center. It's maybe just a little bit to the left. Now, I do have a little bit of play under there, of course, because I did mount that uh, sprocket on a shaft and it's, it's bolted down to it on a, uh, a key. So I can actually slide it back and forth. So it does have some adjustment. I can even turn it around backwards and butt it way over to one side and give me almost another almost another inch that way if I needed to. Or it'll go uh, maybe half an inch or so to the other side. But depending upon how I make all this work, and it's undecided yet, we'll see what happens. But I'd kind of like to keep the engine mount that's on here because that means I can always go back to the 212 if I blow this thing up. For whatever reason at all, it's, it's all here. You know, I can just change things out. Four bolts the engine's out bolt down a new one and just reconnect the, the cables and stuff. It's, it's easy, but yeah, I need to figure out how I want to make that work. Well, I guess that's it for the plans on this thing. You know what, just for shits and grins, I'm gonna pull those hubs off right now on that thing. Let's just see how bad they are. And, uh, and then we'll wrap this video up. All right, this is the kind of shit I'm talking about here. Watch the hub. <laughs> and how it spins and the axle does not. It's freewheeling. And the other problem is, is yeah, it's not supposed to be loose like that. All right, we'll pop that wheel and tire off, and then we'll pull off the axle nut, and we'll see what's inside of that hub and what's going on in there. We're missing a stud. These two bolts were turning pretty easily, but that lug nut right there did not want to turn, and it stripped the head of it out. So I'm probably going to pull this wheel off of here, and then I might drill out the stud from the back side. A lot easier to get to that than from the front side because it's such a deep dish wheel. And when I went to uh, put some lube on this nut, I noticed the axle nut wasn't even tight. So every time I look at this cart, man, uh, it, it came out of just a trashy neighborhood. And even the owner, you should have seen the teeth of them. <laughs> well, look at all this stuff. That probably belongs on there. This well, it may have belonged on there, but got hopelessly crushed. There's the splines, and there are none. <laughs> so. I guess we were right. After all that, there's no splines inside that hub anyway, so it doesn't matter what I do to that hub, I can cut that hub to pieces. Um, the hub is shut, so that wheel should lift right off of there. There it is. It's off. I hope the axle looks good after all that. Let's see. Yeah, the splines on the axle look good. They don't look chewed up at all. Okay. 
Well, that's good. There's our bearing. That's what holds all this stuff together. So we'll pull that apart too because when it comes time to install it on there, we're going to need it. Alright, looks like there's a price on there. Somebody replaced that sprocket at some point. Okay, well, new hubs it is. Nice and smooth bore. <laughs> Either that or it's the wrong hub. Maybe it doesn't even belong on this thing. They look correct though. Maybe it doesn't belong. I don't know. I'll measure the lug pattern on this and uh, I'll take some measurements on the hub and just make sure everything's right before I start ordering parts. All right. There and I is. got both these wheels off, which was a hell of a fight, by the way. Both hubs had to come off with the wheels because the lug nuts wouldn't come out. This lug, this side, none of these lug nuts wanted to come loose. Every single one of them rounded out. What a total bunch of BS. It's totally soft trash metal. Anyway, <laughs> trash metal. Sounds like something my ex used to listen to. Anyway, um, the hubs don't even match. I mean, look at that one. It's got you know, marks in the casting, and they just look totally different. Turn it around backwards and look at the back side of them. You can see that they don't look the same from back there either. It may be different revisions of the same part. Maybe that's the lightweight version or something, I don't know. That one still does have splines in it, and this end of the axle still looks good too. So, that's good news. But what I'll do is I'll get around there and I'll count all the splines on that axle before I order up a new set of these, just to make sure that they are right. And then from the back side here, I'm gonna start drilling out some studs. That pisses me off, but I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do. <laughs> Part of getting this cart so cheap means I had to put a little extra work into it. But I didn't get this cart just to put parts on here. This cart's getting a completely new suspension, at least in the rear anyway, independent rear. And uh, it's getting a different set of wheels, uh, just everything. The axles on the back are gonna be all Volkswagen based. We're using all Volkswagen Beetle based parts on there because I have an abundance of them. Stuff just been sitting around for a long time that I don't know if I'm ever going to use it, so we'll use it on here. So I plan on this being a lot more horsepower anyway, way beyond the stuff that uh, is on here and probably what this was ever meant to handle. So why don't we just use parts that are, you know, from an actual automobile? Even though this whole cart only weighs about 700 pounds, you know, with uh, that stuff on there, I think it'll be a little, a little overbuilt, but that's kind of the idea because it's going to go a lot faster than it was designed to when I'm done with it. So I guess that's it. So once again, you guys, thanks for watching. If you're watching this before the 4th of July, and you probably are, happy 4th, everybody. Really appreciate it. Make sure you blow something up, but not your fingertips. Okay, guys, or any of your hand, for that matter. Try to keep your digits in place. Be safe. Don't get too drunk. You know what I mean? We'll see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. There it is. <laughs> that's all you get.